G'day guys, how are you and welcome back to another video. In today's video we are going to insert a value into our SQLite database. We're going to read that value and we're also going to delete that value using VB.net. So let's begin. So if you guys haven't checked out my previous SQLite tutorial, do check it out because the code that I've got in front of me, I'm just going to build on from that one. So if you guys do want to follow along um, and you don't have this code in front of you, check that video out, um, write that code that I've written in that video and then we can sort of get started from there. So let's begin. So to get this tutorial started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now insert a value into our database. Now I did do this in the previous video, but just so this one can sort of um, follow the same sort of structure, um, I'm going to redo that um, sub and then we're going to go to deleting it, updating it and then also reading it. So let's begin. So to get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another public sub and I'm going to call it um, insert uh, insert user username. I'm going to ask the user to put in the username as a string. So that's going to be our parameter. And yeah, we're pretty much good to go. So right now I can do using sqlcon as new sqlite connection. Put in my connection string. Um, now I can create my query, so I'm just going to write dim insert user query as string equals, and now for the query, I simply want to write insert into user login table. That's the table that I've created in the previous video. I do the, now the bracket, so I'm going to now select the column. So the column in this case is just username, and the values of what I want to insert. I'm going to do another bracket and I'm going to do the at symbol and I'm going to type in user. So this is actually using parameters, which I do recommend. Um, it sort of helps avoid SQL injection. The last thing you want to do is have someone type in a query into a text box that deletes your entire database. So once we've got that query written, now we need to create the command. So dim cmd is new SQLite's command. I'm going to put in my insert user query and the connection. So it's coming from the SQL con. And now I need to add my parameter for my query to be complete. So cmd.parameters.add with value. And I'm going to type in here at user. So with this at user, I mean right there, I could type in Mickey Mouse. As long as I've got Mickey Mouse there and Mickey Mouse down here, um, it's, it's good to go. So this is simply just so we can sort of go, well, I'm going to put whatever value object I do here. In this case, it's just going to be the username and parameter. It just simply puts this value to there, which then, you know, ultimately affects this query here. So once we've got that done, now I need to open up my connection. So I'm just going to write sqlcon.open. And once that connection is open, now what I can do is I can execute my command. Then I could go one step further and I could just write a console, write line, string dot format, and curly braces with zero in there, since it's going to be one object, and I can just write has been added. And now for the object, I'm just going to type in username. So what you guys could also do, just quickly, I'm not going to show you right now because I've already got a video on this, but before you actually add a user, you could also make another query to check if that user is already in the database. If it is in the database, then you can have it throw up, you know, an error saying, you know, hey, you can't add Andrew because he's already in the database. And if Andrew wasn't in the database, then you could have it execute the query. So I do have a video on that. I will leave a link in the description uh, if you guys are interested in that one. Awesome. So now that we've got our insert username, what I'm going to do is going to go back to my module one. So just like I did in the first tutorial, I've still got the server.create database. So now if I wanted to actually insert a value, I'll just write server.insert username and I'll put an Android Evoli. Let's press start and see what happens. Beautiful, look at that. So Android Evoli has been added to the database or has been added. So if I'm to go to my desktop, which is where I've got my SQLite database, um, I'll open up DB browser for SQLite, like I did in the last tutorial. I'll drag it across, we'll go to our username table, browse the data, select the username table, and you can see right there, there is Andrew Eberly. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've been able to insert a value into our database, we now want to delete that value from our database. So let's begin. So let's head over to our server class once again, and we're going to create now a public sub. We're just going to call it remove username. We're going to pass in a username so we know which one exactly is that we're deleting. And yeah, so now we can once again type in using sqlcon as new sqlite connection, put in our connection string, 
Now we're going to create, create our query. So dim um, remove username query as string equals. And now to for the delete query, we're going to write here delete from user login table where, so this is that where statement, where username equals at user. So that's our query. Now if we wanted to sort of be more specific and say, like in this case, we've got multiple Andrewably um, values in that database, we could say, you know, hey, let's delete from user login table where username equals at, you know, such and such and ID equals at ID. Okay, so that will tell it, that'll be more precise. So we're going to delete an Andrew, but we're only going to delete it if that ID equals zero. So if there's an Andrew delete at the ID of zero, then it will delete that. If there isn't, then it won't delete it, okay? So let's, first of all, we'll do the first way, and then we'll go into a more advanced way, and then you know, do the and statement as well. So now that we've got that query created, we're going to create the command again. So once again, dim cmd is new, let's go on light command, we're going to put in our query, so that's just the remove username query and our connection. Let me just quickly modify that because I've deleted too much. So delete from user login table where username equals at parameter, like I said just before, um, the last thing we want is for you know someone to write in a delete query in a text box and have them wipe out our database. So now that we've got our SQL like command creator, we can now do cmd parameters add with value and we're just going to put here at user and we'll write here once again the username. So we're going to pass that through. So once that's done, we're going to open up our connection to the database and then we're going to execute the command. So cmd execute and so once we've done that we want to let the user know that they have indeed removed that username from the database so i'm just going to write console dot right line string dot format and curly braces again with the zero and then just write um, has been removed and there's the username there Awesome, so now let's go back over to our module one. We've inserted the um, value, Andrew Blue. Now we're going to delete it. So server dot remove username. And I'll just put in Andrew Blue again. So let's go back over to our database quickly. We'll refresh it. Um, there's nothing there. So I'm going to start it and I'm going to tell it to break at this point here. That way it won't go any further. Then we'll be able to refresh the database and it should say Andrew Blue in there. So let's start her up. So Andrew has been added. If we head back over to the database and refresh it, you can now see that Andrew has been there. It has the ID of five, okay? So now let's continue on. So I'm gonna press F11. It's gonna go through the query and the console should now say, Andrew Bully has been removed. So if I go back to the database and press refresh, you can see that there's nothing there. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've been able to insert the value andrewably and we've been able to remove that same value what happens if i had multiple andrewblies but i only want to remove one so what we can do is we can head over to our server class and because in like our case we've got two rows one row being the id which is our primary key and the other being the username what i can tell it is i wanted to remove this username um, where the ID equals seven or so forth. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down to my remove username um, sub. I'm going to add another parameter. So I'm just going to call it ID as string. And now I'm going to come down to my query and I'm going to say delete from user login table where username equals at user and ID, which is another column, equals at ID. Now because I've got two parameters, I need to also remember to add that parameter um, to our um, command. So I'm going to now do a space to input cmd parameters, add with value, put in the correct parameter name, so at id, and I want to pass through the id. Okay, so now if I go back to module one, this is going to throw up an error because it's asking now for the id's number. I'm going to put here seven, okay? And I'm also going to add a few more of these in your windows. So let's press start and see what happens. Beautiful. 
So it's been able to add one, two, three, four Android release, and it's also removed one of them. So let's go back over to our DB database browser for SQLite. I'm gonna get a file. And so there's our database. If I browse that data now, you can see we've got an Android bleed under the ID 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so perhaps there wasn't a seven there. There may have been, I'm not really sure. So let's say we wanna delete the last one, which was 14. So let's come back over to our code, type in here 14, press start. It's going to add quite a number of them again. It's also going to remove the one. If I come over to my database, theoretically that 14 should be missing, then it should probably count on 15, 16, 17, 18. So let's refresh. And yep, it's definitely done it. So you can see it's got 18, 17, 16, 15. There's no 14, there's a 13, 12, 11, and so forth and so forth. So wonderful, that query has indeed worked. Okay, so for the next part of the video, now what we're going to do is we're going to learn now how to update a value within our database. So for example, you may put in the wrong details and you don't want to have to fill out, you know, the other 27 columns um, just because you made one little mistake. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to head back over to our server class. We're going to create another sub. We're going to call it public sub update username. I'm going to pass in the username as a string. And in this case, because we've got multiple um, values that are the same, I'm going to say ID as string as well. Awesome, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go using SQL con as new SQL like connection once again, put in the connection string, and now we're going to create a query. So we're going to write dim um, update user name query as a string equals, and so now to update the user, we're going to write update user login table set username so we're going to update the username column username equals at new value I'm going to write new value because this is going to be the updated value where username equals at user and the ID equals at ID so there's actually three parameters in there which we need to fill out when we're creating our SQLite command so just quickly we've got update the user login table set username so we're going to update the username column and it's going to equal the new value where username equals at username and ID equals you know whatever it may be so let's now create our command so dim cmd as new SQLite command I'm now going to put in my update username query in my connection. And now remember, I've got to add three parameters. So now I dot parameters add with value. This will be the first one. So for this particular one, for the new value, um, I'm going to have a new value. I'm going to have it equal thread. Okay, and I'm going to put it, I'm going to have the value thread. update my old username, which we know was just Andrew, for the user. So I'm gonna put in my username parameter. Now, for example, if it cannot find that user, um, it obviously won't be able to execute the query correctly. You could do an if statement first to say that if it, you know, if it finds an Andrew first, then update it. But in this case, like I said before, I've already got a video how you can do that. Do check that out once again. Um, just make things a bit quicker. I'm just going to simply have it update because I know that Andrew's already there. But if it wasn't there, um, you'd obviously want to check to make sure it is there first. So for the third parameter, this will be the ID. And I'll just put once again the ID. Awesome. So now we're going to open up our connection. And now we're going to execute it. Now let's get back over to our module one. And I'm just going to write server dot update username. So the username I want to update will be Andrew Eberly. And I want to update it where the ID equals 15. So let me just make sure I've actually got 15 there in our database. I certainly do. Awesome. So let's start the program and see what happens. Beautiful. Now I actually didn't add a um, message for the update, um, but you certainly could do that. So let's close out of that. Let's now refresh our database. And there we go, it's updated it. So where 15 is, it's updated it to Fred. Awesome, there we go. Okay, so now that we've got that done, now for the final part of the tutorial, what we're actually going to do now is we're actually going to read those values from the database and we're going to display it within our console application. So let's begin. So let's head it back over to our server class. 
I'm going to create another public sub. I'm going to call it read usernames. I'm not going to pass through a parameter because there's no need. We want to get it, you know, all of them. And I'm going to now write using SQL con as new SQL like connection. I'm going to put in my connection string. Okay, so now we've got that done for the final part of the tutorial. We're actually now going to read the values from our database and display it within our console application. So in order to do that, let's head back over to our server class. I'm going to create a public sub and I'm just going to call it read usernames. There's no need to pass through a parameter because we will simply just want to read, you know, all of those usernames. So I'm going to now type in using SQL con as new SQL like connection. I'm going to put in my connection string and now I can write uh, my query. So I'm going to write dim read usernames query as string equals and I'm now going to write select anything so anything in this case is just this um, asterisk and it's what's known as a wildcard so this asterisk for example this is a little bit off topic but for example if you wanted to search your computer for you know only jpeg files you could write star dot jpeg and this will tell the computer to search for anything as long as it ends with jpeg so if you wanted a docx file you could write docx if you wanted you know perhaps you wanted all files i think you can actually write star dot star which will tell her, hey, let's just search for any file, you know? So, yeah, we can now apply this to our query and tell it, well, hey, let's select anything from user login table. Yep. So now we've got that, we now need to create our command. So dim cmd as new SQL like command. I'm going to put in my read usernames query and our connection. Create a reader, so I'm going to write dim reader as SQLite data reader equals cmd dot execute the reader. And because we are actually executing the reader here, even though we've you know declaring the reader as a data um, reader, and then we're executing the reader, we need to actually open up the connection before we actually execute it. Um, you know, just like we did before, but some people will get confused because they're thinking, well, hey, I'm you know, telling it directly to execute, but indeed you are because you're declaring the reader as a data reader and then you're executing it that way. So once we've got that done, we now need to do a while loop. So we'll write here while reader dot read. So whilst it's reading, I can do a for i equals zero to reader dot field count. So this is going to count the amount of fields within our database. We could then write console right line and we we'll just do reader.get value and we'll put in i and just quickly i think in this case you may not have to do it with, with you because of the way i've got my database set up i'm going to have to go negative one so yeah so now we'll head back over to our module one i'm going to actually comment this code out so in order to do that just highlight the code that you want to comment out hold down the control key and press control c control k and that will um, comment your code out. So now I can just write server dot read usernames. So let's debug and see what happens. And there we go. I've now got my usernames there. So I've got absolutely everything from the database, even including the um, primary key number. If I didn't want to read the primary key number there, remember just a split second ago I was telling you about this, you know, asterisk and how this will get anything from the database. Well, I can actually tell it. Well, hey, let's just select the username from user login table. So let's execute that. And there we go, only the username's right there. So there you go guys, um, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, in the two videos we've, you know, we've discussed creating a database, we've discussed um, inserting a value, deleting a value, updating a value, and also reading that value into our console application. Um, if you have any trouble, do leave a comment below, thumb the videos up, and I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.